Welcome to Business Brain, the entrepreneur's podcast, formerly the Small Business Show, episode 390 for Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. Greetings, folks, and yes, welcome to Business Brain here at businessbrain.show. We've changed the name. We've evolve the format but that's already happened you already know that part we'll talk about the name sponsors we'll also talk about our sponsors uh shopify at shopify.com slash sbs is where you can go to get your 14 day trial we'll start moving those urls to something that matches the name of the show but for now it's still shopify.com slash sbs i think we can all deal with that it's going to be okay they're a great sponsor pretty basic. Yeah. yeah pretty basic and uh, we've got another podcast to talk about later on in the show for you as well. One of these that we're doing a swap with. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, at businessbrain.show, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California, I've got a huge smile on my face. This is Shannon Jean. I'm very excited about the new name, the new uh, branding, and I'm excited to talk about why we're doing it. I, I'm excited about all of it as well. We've got some listener questions. Actually, a question... <laughs> And a comment, <laughs> yes, <laughs> which which I think you're gonna like to hear, folks, uh, later in the show. A comment, we maybe need a, one of those buzzers, like uh, yeah, <laughs> a question and a call out, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. But uh, but yeah, so business brain. This is something. We, we, so we started talking about this a while ago, and and even started talking about it on the show a little bit here and there. The i the, the problem with the name, the small business show is, well, It's there are multiple issues with it. Number one, we were not the only small business show out there. In fact, we weren't even one of two or even one of five. And so it made it right. very difficult for people to find the show when we said, hey, you know, go to find the small business show wherever you get your podcast. Well, you'll find a small business show. But you might not find us. And that's not so good. Uh, so we wanted, to, we wanted to address that. But also, it's a pretty generic name as evidenced by the fact that there are lots of them out there and it doesn't really get to the nuances of what we're actually talking about here. And so that's right. We started down this path of spitballing for lack of a more technical term and trying to figure out what do we actually do? And we've tried some of these things out in the episodes and the one that stuck, as you might've heard in the past few episodes is business brain. Because that's what we're doing. We're talking about using our business brains in business, yes, but also pretty much throughout our lives and applying them to our lives in ways that sort of helps things move forward, helps us live that charmed life, if you will. Yeah. And, and that's, I think, you know, we talked a, a lot about how to get that across is that it's a mindset that we're talking about that allows you to, you know, embrace risk and uh, you know, em embrace making mistakes and all, all the little things that we've talked about over, you know, the last uh, seven or eight years, 390 episodes and business brain really, I think, encap encapsulates it because it, it's, we talk about, you know, one of my favorite things to talk about is story, to think about how you're creating the story and how, if you think of it backwards about where you want the story to lead, it's it's easier to create along the way. And and that's using your business brain. And over and over, we just came up with examples. Uh, and I'm excited about it. I, I really like the new logo, which we'll put up at uh, businessbrain.show. It'll, it'll, if you go to, um, I can't even remember the old URL anymore. I'm don't, don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I'm not I, I mean, to if you so, go there, yeah. it's fine. You will be redirected yes. to businessbrain.show. It's all good. It's not going to be a problem. Yeah, but, but you can go there. You'll see. Yeah, you'll actually you'll see the new logo in your podcast app when you listen to this, as I will use that. And uh, when we do the graphic, but you can also go to businessbrain.show where all of our 390 episodes live. And uh, we'll link some of those back today to kind of call out how we think uh, using a business brain uh, gets you to that charmed life that we really are encouraging you to lead. Yeah, I, I, I like this name. We've we've obviously we've lived with it internally for a couple of weeks here and it 
I, I, as soon as it, I think it was you that brought it up, Shannon. I, I'm pretty sure it came from you. Yeah, it came. I think so. We were just going down the list and had, you know, but one of the things that I, that I like that Dave, that you and I have always done is just dump out data when we're looking for something new, whether it's a name, a tagline, a web address, whatever it is. And just to keep going. And that, that list lived up in our Google drive for, maybe a couple of months. Um, and we just kept tweaking it. And some of them I found, I was like, this is it. This is the one I like the best. And then Dave would say, no, no, I don't like that one. And so I said, okay, okay. Or it's too generic or it's too yeah. this or too that. And then just letting them percolate it. You can really see, uh, especially on this, uh, as we develop this name, business brain, y you can just see it coming to, coming to formation over time and how it started to encapsulate more and more of what we, uh, what we believe in, what we've been trying to share with you, uh, you know, for the last uh, seven years. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I, I, like I said, I liked it. I, I guess I liked it when I first heard it. I don't even know. Cause it, you're right. It was just in, in that sort of barf of, of ideas, but it, it certainly percolated to the top. I didn't hate it when I first heard it. That's for sure. Cause otherwise we would have kind of vetoed it or, or talked about it, but, um, that's but right. it, it, yeah, it, 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 it really does encapsulate that which we do here and i i i like that we are we are applying our business brains every week oh wait maybe that's right. another little tagline there you go <laughs> i like it yeah, yeah. business brain and you know go uh you, if you come to businessbrain.show i'll link back to a bunch of episodes um from previous uh well, previous shows that I think do a great job of talking about it. Uh, the other thing we're doing, I'm in the process of uh, designing some t-shirts and I would love to give out shirts for uh, listeners that send in questions like we're going to talk about today. So um, where would they send those questions, Dave? Feedback at businessbrain.show. I'm going to have to get used Perfect. to saying that feedback yes. at businessbrain.show. There you go. Yeah. So let us know what you think. Tell us what you think about the new name. Uh, send us questions your way and uh, get yourself a T-shirt. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. It's really yeah. important. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, yeah. Feedback at businessbrain.show. I need to make a new uh, text expander snippet for that and replace the go. old one. Yeah. yeah. And I think you're also working on some new ways for our listeners to engage with us. Uh, we'll be rolling out pretty soon. Uh, we're experimenting with them, some things to where you can connect to Dave and I a little closer and uh and other, and, other and, grow. And, yeah and and not just you and me but it, where everybody yeah. can connect with each other we're specifically we're talking about a a a, a i was gonna say a group home that's not what i mean but that's what i mean <laughs> um so but i i and and we've been sort of tossing around the idea of of slack or discord i'm pretty sure we're gonna go with slack if you think that's a terrible idea Feedback at businessbrain.show right away. You got to email us now because I think that's the direction we're going. So, um, but we'd love yeah, to too. love to hear from you, and we'll, we'll get that rolled out in the next uh, eh, the next couple of weeks here as we as we settle into our our new name and new URLs and all of that good stuff. So, yeah. that sounds good, man. All right. Well, I want to get to some of these questions. Well, I want to get to the question and then also the call out uh, because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I also want to talk about our sponsor and then this podcast that we're doing a swap with. If now is a good time for you, for me to do that, Shannon. Sounds good, man. There it is again. I love that sound. That's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all in one commerce platform to start run and grow your business. Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like all of us, the resources once reserved for big business and they can be customized for our needs with great looking online stores that bring our ideas to life and tools to manage our day to day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens endless possibilities and it's a journey. And that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. Hey, Shannon and I, we've used Shopify for ventures in the past. It works really well because they know what they're doing with this. We know what we're doing with other things. It's a perfect match. And it's not just us. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs from first sale to full scale. 
Go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase for a free 14 day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. Next up are our friends at the Passion to Profit podcast. Have you ever wondered how to find purpose and fulfillment while the kids are all gone at school? Or what your next side venture could be? Now you can turn your home organizing skills into a successful career and work part-time hours and make full-time income. Learn how to price your services, give estimates, format contracts, and get your own home organizing business going in less than a day. Host Barbie Jo is a luxury home organizer and founder of the Polished Professional Organizer Academy. You can find her podcast, Passion to Profit, at passion, the number two, profit.buzzsprout.com, or wherever you find your podcast. When you're looking for it, it's passion to T-O, profit, like on Apple Podcasts and things like that. Contribute to your family and your community by joining the professional organizing industry and transform homes into havens. Thanks, Barbie Joe, and it's a pleasure to do this promo swap with you. All right, so Niles writes, I am worried about an upcoming recession and how it will impact my business. I run a multi-location building materials business that has been doing well, but I'm starting to see signs that things are slowing down. I've been listening to your shows about preparing for that slowdown. My question is, how do I prepare my employees for what may be coming without freaking them out and causing undue anxiety or causing them to start looking for jobs elsewhere? I don't know yet how will we be how we will be impacted, easy for me to say, or even if we will, but I'm worried. Thanks for the show and the advice. What do you think, man? I think it's a great question. You know, we talked a bit about this um in in the recent show, but Niles, I think the first thing is great that you're actually thinking about this. And and I would say a couple things. One, when things start to slow down, employees usually often know it before even you do. You know, they're often on the or they're on the phones, they're on the front lines, they're loading orders, they're dealing with uh, you know customer service stuff. So you you be you may be surprised, but they're going to have a sense of how things are going already. But I. I think you can be open and transparent and really authentic. This your your second part of your question here, where it says, you know, I don't want to cause undue anxiety. I don't want to freak anybody out. You can have that conversation with your people. You can say, look, hey, I wanted to touch base. I know you've been reading a lot in the news about, you know, are we in a recession? Uh, are we not? How it's going to be? You know, could we be impacted? And I think it's an okay uh, topic to bring up and maybe you bring it up in a casual environment instead of I'm calling an all hands meeting where people get kind of nervous. Um, you know, I, if you've listened to the show before, you know, I love the, the, the Friday barbecue or lunch concept, which you're kind of uh, flanking everybody. It is really a meeting that you're having. Yes. You're providing food or even better if you're cooking it for them, but you you have an opportunity to, you know, everybody kind of relaxes and they're off their guard a bit. And so you can, you can have these discussions and be like, Hey, I want you to know, I've been watching those things too. And I'm not sure if we're going to be impacted, but I want to let you know that I will keep you posted how things are going and hopefully it won't impact us. And maybe it would, it will even help us. You know, we've talked a lot about ways to improve your business when things slow down. Uh, and some industries do better than others. You know, the, you're in a building material. Well, maybe it's a shift to, if, if your customers are more contractors, maybe it's a DIY, uh, you know, department you could get going to help uh, homeowners that are be holding on to their money tighter, but doing more of the work around their house themselves. So there's some op opportunities there. Yeah. I, 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 I think, you know, my, the thing that I, kind of jumped out at me was, you know, I don't want to freak them out. I don't want to cause them undue anxiety. I don't want to cause them to start looking for another job. I think the thing that could cause that would be most likely to cause any of those three reactions 
would be not talking about this to yeah, your point. Shannon. They don't, the unknown. Yeah, yeah. The unknown. They, they, they know that something's going on. Like you said, they've heard it somewhere. I'm reminded of when, you know, we were, I don't know, two, maybe three weeks into pandemic lockdown. So right. Maybe beginning of April, 2020. And of course, I, as soon as it all started, I started, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what do we have? What kind of runway do we have with the businesses? If income stops, how long does it actually make sense for us to keep people employed before we start laying people off? And, you know, all of those things. And of course, I didn't know about any of these disaster loans or payroll protection because they hadn't been conceived yet, or at least not rolled out yet, you know? And uh, so everybody was figuring it out. And I looked at everything in the businesses and I felt pretty good. I'm like, oh, well, we've had, you know, we've, we've had uh, a good year leading up to this. We've got some extra cash. Thankfully, we haven't spent it on growth yet. Let's not do that. Let's hold on to it while we figure out what's going on. Yeah, I can keep people employed. I knew that I could do it for, I, could, I in fact, I knew I could do it for a year. And then it hit me one day where I thought, wait a minute. The staff doesn't know anything that I know. Like there's yeah, no way. Th things yeah, yeah, yeah. All those things I just said, they're in my head. I'd shared them with my business partners, but that's, that's the, that's as far as it went. I thought, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Like I got to let these people know immediately. And it turned out to be a Friday at, at our staff meeting. Now it could have easily been a Tuesday that it just hit me that Friday morning. Like, whoa, crap. I got to talk to these people. Like this is super important because I know yeah. they know. And, uh, and, and of, of course they did, because how could you not? Like we were all in, you know, we had talked about lockdowns. Obviously we've been experiencing this It's a little bit different than a recession, but still everybody knew and they were very relieved just to have the conversation. They were astonished when I told them that we were going to, you know, I told them three months. I, I, I knew I had at least six, maybe 12 of runway I'm always conservative with what I, you know, quote unquote guarantee. It was not a guarantee, but I know it was received that way. So uh, I'm very careful about that. And and I told him, I said, look, you know, we've got at least three months to keep everybody on board. And they all said they're like at, at our at our current salaries. And I said, yes. And That's great. And they yeah. said, oh, we had talked amongst ourselves and decided that if we could reduce, I think they said 20 percent, you know, just to keep everybody, we would rather do that than have you lay off, you know, people to 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 cover costs. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, obviously, I didn't use that against my employees. That would be a bad sign. Um, I wasn't interested in it. But, it, you know, it was one of those things where like, oh, not only have they been thinking about it, they've been talking about it with everyone except me. Like, yeah, they know, man. Now I'm in the conversation. This is a good thing. Yeah, so, good. yeah, I, you know, I think one I, of the things yeah, that, go ahead. that you mentioned that I want to call out is, um, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of meetings and we've done shows about how to kind of maximize meetings because they can be such a drudge. But you're you mentioned your your weekly check in or weekly yeah. staff meeting. That's a great argument to have something like that. So even if it's just like, hey, anything going on we need to touch base with? Nope. Okay, great. <laughs> let's let's go to work. But that regular check in, I know some people that do it Mondays, uh, you know, to all hands to say, hey, talk about what's going on. Um, and other days, but that is a good argument that, hey, we're just gonna talk about this at our next regular meeting. It's uh I, I like it a lot. Yeah, the whole regular meeting thing, I think when you're when you're running a remote business, which, you know, as I've said on the show, we've been doing for decades, you have to force interaction amongst the team. Uh, yeah. You know, they will communicate with each other as evidence, sure. <laughs> but it, only if you sort of foster that communication. And, and we found that out. You know, I don't want to say the hard way, but but we stumbled into it like, OK, wait a minute. You know, we've, we've got to talk and there is no water cooler. Right. You, you know, there, people aren't going to accidentally run into each other and talk. You're not going to accidentally run into the team and speak. So you, you've got to be a little more intentional about it. Uh, I, like you, Shannon, I'm not a huge fan of meetings at, at Mac Observer. We actually did a daily meeting. It was a quick one. We limited it to 15 minutes and usually it went eight to 10, 
but it it was it was an important thing for us procedurally to sort of hand off from the morning shift to the afternoon shift. It 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 really helped with what I'll call the short term institutional knowledge of okay, here's what I saw this morning. Here's what you're gonna see. Preparing yep. people, saving time. It, it did wind up saving time, but yeah. Otherwise, with with the other businesses, weekly meetings have been the a much better, uh, you know, schedule, much much better pacing to go with. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and, it, and, it, it's I, good. And like you said, they can sometimes be super quick, like five minutes. Like, does anybody have anything today? So maybe if there is no, you know, quote unquote work to discuss, somebody might share a, a personal anecdote or something. We sort of let that happen. Uh, again, because we're humans and we're interacting with each other a lot, it's okay to let life sort of spill in because again, these things are not going to happen, you know, at the water cooler. So you, you kind of have to carve out time for the humanity, the human portion of your team to, 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 to blossom. Otherwise people don't know who each other is and, and that yeah. can be a problem. And obviously you can go too far in that direction you got to be careful with that too, but some of it is, I think, really helpful. Um, and and I'll you know, I'll I'll pat myself on the back and brag a little bit and say that most people that work for me have been with me for you know over a decade. So something about that works. It's saying something. Yeah, it says exactly. something. I don't. I it, yeah. it may not. It may have nothing to do with the the pacing of our meetings, mind no. you. But yeah, yeah, part 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 of it. Part and of and it, I yeah. I would say you know everyone wants to feel valued. So when you have these type of conversations, I think people feel like, oh, you know, he, they're, they're taking time out to have this discussion with us because they value mm. the way we feel and are they don't want us to worry or they want to alert us like, hey, you know, we're just not sure what's going on. But, you know, um, and and that that fear of the unknown is is often, you know, the biggest the biggest factor. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I'm, a, you know. Uh, overly optimistic about everything in my life. And for the most part, it's, it's really served me well, but one of the downfalls is I hate sharing bad news. And I hate, like, I, I, I have to be pushed to talk, to do these kinds of things. So if you are an optimist, which I hope you are, um, you may have to really uh, force yourself to get out there and talk about some negative stuff. Um, Cause it's better to get out in front of it than it is to just let it fester. Yeah. Yeah, because it will it it is already festering. That that's the yes. important thing to to note is it's already festering. Yes. So, yep, yeah, yeah. Talk about it. Cool. So now, I hope that answers your question. If you if you need any follow up uh, feedback at businessbrain dot show is where uh, you can get some more info. We we'll respond to our uh, when we responded to you. But if you have any other questions, please reach out. All right. Uh, I want to, I want to, I'm going to take this one, Dave, because okay. this is totally my idea. <laughs> and I, I, again, it's one of those things that has served me very well in life. It's the revenue stack concept uh -huh. that. Uh, I see you couching I, I, already. You just, you haven't, well, you haven't even course, read. Sure. Show. I'm you're answering. Read it. I'm read it. I'm you're read it. you're yeah. responding before we've even let her speak. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so Shauna, Shauna writes in and she has some, some good stuff to say, but the, the crux of it is. Uh, Shauna writes, I enjoy your podcast, but I think you guys are wrong about the multiple revenue idea, which I, I call revenue stack. In my experience, if you don't focus on one thing and become really good at it, you risk doing a bunch of things not very well. Oh, man. So, yeah, I, yeah. I've had this thought many times throughout my career. Now, I, sure. I my career has been that of what you call revenue stacks I, I that's certainly your term I never started calling it that until we we started doing things together but I had been doing it all the way through and I I thought of them as faucets you know I like to have lots yeah, of okay. fa faucets going yeah. and they all don't need to flow at the same rate right and the one that I've got my hand on that's that's gonna flow better generally than the one that I don't although there have been cases where that's it's been exactly the opposite i've screwed something up but uh yep. but by and large you know the one that you pay attention to does a little better the ones if if there's multiples that you can pay attention to simultaneously and then the others are just there kind of you know trickling along but but they are to me opportunities and they're the safety net and that way if something does happen outside of my control or even within my control that causes one to just stop immediately 
I'm not left without a revenue stream. And so I've done this, yeah. but I, but I've had this thought that Sean has shared many times. Like, would I, what would things be like for me? And would I be better off if I got rid of everything and just picked one and went all in on it? And I, like, I don't know the answer to that question because I've never let myself do that. But I, you know, we talk about don't make fear-based decisions. It's entirely possible that this whole revenue stack idea is the biggest fear-based decision I continue to make. Oh, I don't think so. I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no way. But, I, but it I, might I, be. We, you yeah. don't know. That's what I'm saying is you don't know. Yeah. 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 I, I get your point, Shauna. And I think it's all about timing. Okay. So, so let mm. me answer this or defend it. If you start a business and you're just getting it going and then some other shiny object, oh, oh, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to be, okay, and then I'm going to, yeah. If you spread yourself too thin and you don't stick to it or you shift into something else right when your main thing starts to get hard, you, you will, you're going to have a bad time and you may fail across multiple revenue stacks or faucets or streams or whatever you want to call them. But the my concept to expand on it a little bit is that once you've created a business that's generating revenue and it doesn't need all of your attention anymore now when that is 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 up to you and you may have to experiment with it and maybe it's the the 80 percent rule that we've talked about on the mm. show that mm. when you can delegate your to someone else that can do at least an 80 percent 80 percent of the work or as good as you do um it could be that time. Uh, and so that's what I mean, is that you've gotten things going. Everything's okay, great. And I, looking back, which is much easier than looking forward, I know that when I start to get bored, when I'm through with the new thing and the startup, and it, it, I'm kind of, it's we're, we're doing the daily motion, and the system is working, and I've hired managers and supervisors and this, and okay, great, that's doing well. Then I have more time on my hands and I start thinking about what's next for me. And then I would start putting my oar in the water a little bit to see how could we start. Then I reached out to a guy like Dave Hamilton and said, hey, we should start a business, uh, you know, an information business. You know, this was, I don't know, 20 years ago. And uh, he's like, yeah, maybe. What is it? And then we start playing around with it. And over time, you develop another business that, you know, ran for a decade and generated a ton of cash for us. Uh, and so that, that's the important part. And, and one way, other way you could do it is flip the script and don't do it yourself, but hire people to come expand on your revenue stack. So maybe mm. in your business, you look at an opportunity or maybe it's something completely different, but you say, well, look, I've got this foundation that's generating some cash. I can afford to hire a person. So maybe you hired someone and said, I want to start this new thing or experiment with it. You bring them in, you oversee and, and see how it goes. But you can stay primarily focused on this uh, one thing that you can become really good at or if it's taking more of your time. So um, I have a, you know, I use the notes app on my phone and on my computer that I, I generate, you know, tons of business ideas like almost every day. Oh, this is a good idea. This is a good idea. And then later I go back and kind of parse those out because I'm like, yeah. well, that was stupid. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Good. Right. Yeah. It sounds but, good in the moment or whatever. And yes, then you think yes. about it a little yeah. bit and it's like, oh, yeah, not so much. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I think it was, I don't know, Hemingway that said, you know, write drunk and edit sober. It's that kind of concept. It's yeah. like, you should just go crazy in, up front, but then go back and really chop it up. Uh, and, that's what I do, but what I, I mean, Hemingway things, had a problem, mind you. Yes, but, he did. You know, he was like, like, don't become an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes. right. Yeah, be careful of that part of it. But yeah, that's yeah. right. That was more justification yeah. of something completely different, I think. But but I, the the concept is right. Right it, it was, is correct. Right without limitations. I create yeah. you know log ideas without judgment, and then go back later and apply that judgment, but. But time shift the two things. Just let the ideas flow like we did with our names for this, you know, yep. the, the name change for this show. There were some awful, awful names that we put in there. And like in the moment, I knew that, you know, I was suggesting something that was awful. 
But I've also done it enough where I know, okay, I'm going to put it out there. It might not be as awful as I currently think it is. And but even if it is, putting it out there gets it out of my head so I'm not focusing on it any, anymore, right? It's done. It's on yep. paper. I don't have to think about trying to remember it, it, it and how terrible it is and never do anything like that again, right? I just put it out there. But also sometimes, you know, I or, or you will see this terrible idea that one of us puts out there and then it's like, oh, well, that that's that's ridiculous. But – that gave me an idea and you and you get this, Correct. you know, this iterative process, if you will, a reactionary process that might be the thing that led to business brain. I don't know. Right. I mean, I we, I can't no. tell you how this name came out, but it did not come out of a vacuum. It, it you know, yeah, and, and it's part of your process. Point, you, yeah. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. Right. So unless you're willing to talk about it, write about it, uh, you know, experiment with it, you're not going to know. So yes, you could be the best, uh, like in Niles case, you, you could be the best building material business owner out there and start a Home Depot type thing. Or you could be, you know, really good at a small business that just kind of stays small and does its own thing. Both are fine. It's up to your definition of success. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, I would say, Shonda, you probably have more. The fact that you are listening to the show, that you're writing in asking questions or or telling me I'm wrong, th those are good things. And th you have more inside in, in you uh, and more opportunities for success than you think. And that's what I love about the revenue stack concept. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I, I again, I, I will posit I, I, I will stand on that, that it, it there is some part of it that is a fear based decision. Uh, certainly okay. for me, yeah. but I, my, my guess is for you yeah. too, because it's, well, yeah, subconsciously, maybe subconsciously, like, I, I, yeah, yeah. you, you want to have a backup plan, right? I, that's how I think of these things. It's like, okay, well, there's yes. multiple streams. So that, that's a good thing that, that adds to that. That's the idea, right? The, you don't just want to have one thing that you rely on. You want to have multiples. Is that fear and, based? And, and, maybe, you know, so, yeah. And, and to be, to be honest, some of these things I just kind of fell into. Oh, the, an the, opportunity. The, the good ones are the ones I fell into for sure. Yeah. yeah. An opportunity came along and, and we've done episodes on the power of saying yes. And we've done on the power of saying no. Yeah. But if you have this uh, kind of uh, view, viewpoint or framework of abundance and that I can take, okay, yeah, what whatever comes to me, I can look at and analyze and see if that's good. Um, you could say yes to those opportunities that can have a dramatic impact on your life. So it may not even be something that you need to develop, but if you're thinking along those lines, it, it's, it's kind of magical. It's like the create your own luck concept. Yeah. Things just start coming to you because you talk to different people and you're, you're thought of as, wow, this guy's got all this interesting things going on. I wonder if, they would be interested in this, or maybe I should introduce them to that person. So you create this fertile soil, if you will, to grow all these things just by being open to the possibility that it might happen. Yeah. And I, and I'll leave it at that. And yeah. you can, you know, uh, yeah. and, and it's not right for everybody, but it certainly made all the difference in, in my life. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to change the way I do things, uh, yeah. no, I don't think so. but I, but if you, if you are not comfortable diverting or splitting your focus, then I would say don't. Uh, yeah, if, that's if, correct. If you or it's think, too early. Yeah. yeah, or it's too early. Right. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. It, but if you think the best thing for you and your business is to remain singularly focused on the one thing that you do, then you got to trust your gut. Like that's th – there is – of all – the things that you can look at as indicators as to whether you should make a decision or not. I am a firm believer that your gut is the most important one. My gut has rarely failed me. I, I will point out, yeah. but uh, there, most of my failures come from when I, you know, what I call outsmart myself. So don't outsmart yourself. Yeah. yeah. Use your business brain. That's great. But, That's it. But, That's but, it. but sometimes your business stuff. brain means trust your gut. Yes. Yeah, you could have your business gut, right? But, your business gut. Uh, <laughs> Maybe yeah. we need a different name for the show, Shannon. Oh, gosh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, great comments, great questions. Um, 
you know, talk to us. Feedback at businessbrain.show. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Yeah, feedback at businessbrain.show. I'm just saying it again because I need to get used to saying it because I really want to say the old one. Man. Make sure you check out our sponsor, Shopify.com slash SBS, and go listen to that passion, passion to Profit podcast. Both of those things will get you to the charmed life. We'll see you next week. This is the Show.